Welcome to Toffee TV. Everton have announced the signing of Irish international Jake O'Brien. And who better to speak to to get all the lowdown than Paul Nealon? Paul, how are you, mate? All good, all good. Uh, another Irishman at the Toffees, so can't complain. Uh, himself there with Seamus Coleman. So, uh, yeah, great news, obviously, from a, an Irish fan and an Everton fan. So, I'm delighted to see uh, another one through the door there now. Yeah, of course, Paul uh, covers uh, all the goings on for the Irish team and the la the Irish local teams on Irish Football Fan TV. Um, and you you've seen him up close, haven't you? You've seen him play for Ireland. What what's your what's your like first thoughts of him coming into sign for Everton? Well, yeah, I've I've seen him kind of up close from the Ireland t under twenty ones. Um, he would have been playing with Cork City as well uh, in the League of Ireland before moving over to Crystal Palace. And he went initially on a loan to Crystal Palace on like a six-month loan. And it was kind of like a trial. And um, one of the Ireland kind of backroom staff, Stephen Royce, he was involved with Crystal Palace uh, under-23s team at the time with Sean Derry um, there. And, and basically, he was brought over on trial, but he quickly became captain of that side. And then he got signed. Uh, permanently there and then he went on a couple of loans to Swindon and he went on loan then to Molenbeek and he helped he helped Molenbeek get promoted mm. Molenbeek Crystal Palace and Leon are all owned by John Texter who we obviously knows is um linked with Everton at the minute but he kind of did a bit of a, a merry-go-round there with all the clubs that involved but he, he, it was when he went to Molenbeek was when he really started getting noticed because he really uh help them get promoted there's a there's a really kind of iconic photo with blood all over his face <laughs> uh from, from playing with that team and uh yeah their fans were were hoping to get him back uh to Molenbeek I believe and then um he, because he'd done so well there then Crystal Palace were having a look at him and then before you know it he signed for Leon. he had a really good season last year with Leon, and Irish fans kind of wanted to get to get him in quite quickly John O'Shea brought him into the team but for the first camp he, he never gave him a game he went with uh, all Premier League centre-backs Nathan Collins and Jerome Abamadeli and uh, Dar O'Shea I think it was and he didn't give Jake a run and a lot of Irish fans were a bit upset upset by that but he did get his, his two caps in the last international camp and we got the win over Hungary and then we got uh, beat by uh, Portugal Cristiano Ronaldo was on form in that game but he, he looked really good uh, for the Irish team and People forget at the start of the season when Leon was struggling, he wasn't in the side, but it was when he came into the side, then obviously they had a bit of a turnaround and he played the 27 games. He got four goals, he got a couple of assists as well. So he was a big uh, presence and a big part of the turnaround uh, at the club. And I think a lot of people in France were really impressed by him as well in terms of the, the fans of Leon and the, the French media were really impressed with him because he came in as a kind of a nobody, a bit obscure coming in and couldn't get his game for Palace, couldn't kind of break through with Palace and then coming to Leon and, and having a really good season. Yeah, as you mentioned there, I mean, Leon obviously were fighting uh, for, for a large part of the season in the relegation spaces and then fought back and I think they got themselves a Europa League spot and got to the Cup Finals well, only being beaten uh, by PSG in the final. So he done really, really well, didn't he? And uh, as you mentioned... He scored there, in that final too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, you mentioned there, John Texas, I remember seeing a video of him with uh, President Macron, I think it was. And he was yeah. he was really like big and, big and Jake O'Brien. Is it is it... Is it a surprise that he never went back to Crystal Palace then? Because obviously you mentioned it's part of the the club dynamic or, or texter for texter. Are you surprised that he never went back to Palace? It, it was a bit of a weird. I remember I did a podcast with him um, around January, February on on our channel, and I was saying to him like, how, how did the kind of move come about? And he said the Crystal Palace owner was actually the owner of Leon and stuff like that. And then I started joining the dots. I I was a bit. After Molenbeek, I was thinking, like, where, where is his next move going to be? Because we didn't really expect him to have the rise. Uh, that's why I wasn't surprised when, like, like Leon fans were kind of going, who is this guy? He even said that himself on the podcast. A lot of people were kind of asking about kind of who he is and why why have Leon signed this fella who, who largely not a lot of people would have, would have heard about unless you were maybe a Palace fan or you're from Ireland. Um and then, yeah, he he's... I don't know why it didn't work out at Palace. Mm. I thought it was a bit strange, but for some reason, I think the scout reports in, in Molenbeek were really good, and then he got taken on by Leon, and uh, he just really took his chance, and he's really excelled in the last year. And, yeah, I, I think, realistically, he's probably Ireland's form centre-back, and we've, we've 
although we're not blessed all the rest around the rest of the pitch we are quite blessed in center half terms and i think he would probably be the the first choice center back at the minute now if you're if you're looking at form yeah so obviously he's done brilliantly and and the rumors of him coming to Everton have been there for some time as well haven't they you know i think going back to around january i think i started there and then him being linked with Everton, which is it sounds like they've um they've got their man and maybe maybe we're looking at him before he even went to leon but as a player, what are Everton getting? What are this 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 young man's strengths? Well, I, I have seen a lot of things about this. He has a lack of pace or is a lack of speed. That's not true because he, he is quite a fast player. I think it's more he gets he he might get caught on the turn a bit more. But like if you're kind of comparing, let's say, I'd probably say a bigger kind of bigger version of James Tarkovsky, but mm. he can actually play ball out from the back. Like he can start attacks. He, he did that a lot at Leon. He can actually. Uh, play out from the back, bit like bit of a mix probably between Brantway and Tarkovsky. I mean, mm. he's not afraid of a physical battle. He's good in both boxes. He's obviously scored goals, and he, he can be a bit of a nuisance in the opposition's box uh, for assists as well. So, uh, you know, he's he's big, he's um, physical, but he can actually play as well. I think the only thing that people are kind of focusing on as a negative is he might be slow on the half turn. But again, mm. like James Tarkovsky is not the fastest player in the world, and I think. If you could get yourself positionally sound, and I think Sean Dice will work on that with him, I think we've got a really good Premier League kind of ready-made player there. Yeah, he's he 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 does strike me as like like the ultimate Sean Dice player in many ways. I know, obviously, when when this deal was uh, rumored and we had all people online talking about Fab Romano, here we goes and all that. I know a lot of Manchester United fans were get a little bit excited and, and we're thinking that this would mean the the end of Jared Branthwaite's time at Everton this summer. But as you just mentioned there, I think long term he is the replacement for James Tarkowski. I think he really is got got the look of him and the physicality of him, as you mentioned before, seeing him seeing him um with the blood all over his face. And this is a lad who certainly, you know, likes to defend and you know, I think modern footballers need to be able to play out the back. Gone are the days where you can just huff, hoof it up fields. You need to have a little bit extra about you. That's what takes you field, uh, takes you uh, forward in your career. And as we've seen from Branthwaite last season, is ca- having calmness uh, in your own box as well is such an important trait. This that, that now with with a lot of defenders. So you know, for me, you're, you're absolutely spot on. Tarkowski would seem to be the man uh, long term that we would we'd be looking to replace. Yeah, the only the only thing for maybe from an Irish perspective, maybe a little bit selfishly, if you take the Everton fan away from it, is kind of worrying is you know will he get his chance to break in or when will he get that chance? And it'll probably be in like a cup game or if an injury mm. happens, uh, more so to kind of see how well. It, but I do think that if Jay can break into the team, I, I think he's one of those players that is similar to Seamus Coleman is is he'll just come in and he'll work and he'll work and he'll work uh, until he's in the team. And I. I Everywhere he's gone, he's been quite the leader. He was a leader in the Leon dressing room as well. Like he was, he was mentioned on that podcast I did with him. He wasn't afraid to shout with other players. Like you think of the players that would have been at Leon, like Nemanja Matic, Lacazette, um, Dejan Lovren, just to name a few, who've all kind of won big trophies and stuff like that. And he wasn't afraid to kind of shout at them. He's quite a soft spoken lad off the pitch. He's very quiet and stuff like that. But once he seems to cross, uh, the white line onto the pitch. He has. He seems to have a switch, and I could foresee him being an Everton and Ireland captain in the future if he keeps going the way he's going uh, at the minute. And he does strike me very much uh, similarly to Seamus Coleman. I think Seamus will obviously help him settle at the club too. Yeah, you mentioned Seamus. There's been a lot of talk that Seamus Coleman might have been very influential in bringing him in, and obviously. You know, we we know how much Seamus Coleman means to Evertonians. We know how much Seamus Coleman means to um, to Irish fans and also the Irish players. You know, um, do you think that will have been you know him having a word in his ear would have would have been a major pull for him to come to Everton, explaining to him how big the club is, how important the club is, and also how many unbelievably good Irish players we've had at this football club as well. Yeah, but I think that I think that's been forgotten. I think people forget how big of a club Everton are. Obviously, for the last three seasons, it's been it's not been a nice place to go and play football. It's not been a nice place in general with all the goings on behind the scenes and stuff like that. But it does look like the way Everton are going now with the with their business this summer that things are starting to turn. And obviously, I think what, what has been a nice thing, and, and maybe Jake would have seen it, was obviously with the documentary and mm. the kind of love that Seamus got going back to Sligo and the love he would have got the night before at the premiere and stuff like that. But yeah, like when you speak to any 
Irish player or any interview with them, any Irish player, all they speak about is the respect mm. they have of Seamus Coleman. They did one with Gavin Bazuna a few years ago, and they, they kind of go and try to – he goes out of his way to make sure players feel at home, and he probably would have done that at international level when he came into his first camp and stuff like that. So I think I think you probably resonate with it as well. I think when Seamus Coleman speaks, you listen. I think a lot of people, he has that, he has a way of kind of gripping you in. Um, although he doesn't speak a lot, but when he does speak, you do listen. And I think that that's probably what's um, someone who Jake would probably look up to is a similar path. League of Ireland, a couple of long moves before he got his chance to play. That if he, if someone like Seamus gives you a call and, and takes the time out to kind of um, convince you to join Everton, then I think you're going to take that very seriously. And I think that's what he's done. Yeah, absolutely. I think, as you just said there, when Seamus uh, speaks, we listen because it, there's so much respect for him. Um, can He he can play both sides, can't he, of centre-back as well. So, as you said there, I think it's really important, isn't it, that he can come in, and I think, as this, as a, someone who can come in and fill in for both of them, that gives, obviously, the manager more options and, and the, the chance to maybe um, allow people time maybe to out the side if they need it because last season what we found is obviously those two were fantastic at the back but there were times especially in December going into the new year where they were a little bit stretched and I think for me this year I know this might disappoint Irish fans a little bit is just for this year this will be that year where he beds in at Everton Football Club, which which we've seen. And you mentioned Seamus. Seamus bedded in and then went on loan to to Blackpool and came back as the as the player we 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 saw um that we've had for all these years. I, I think for Jake O'Brien, it seems like he'll probably have this year to bed in. I think he'll play games. And at the end of it, you can imagine, you know, things might happen that might be out of Everton's control or very much in Everton's control in Everton's control that make um make him then the starter and and ultimately that I think that long term for Ireland will be a fantastic thing because yes you've just mentioned yourself he's not an automatic starter for Ireland so it's not a bad thing that that is that there is that crossover period that he does get experience and he gets a he gets a year training with you know whatever anyone thinks of the coaching staff at Everton, you know, maybe in the final third, defensively, Everton was spot on last year. So for Jake O'Brien, I think that's a great opportunity and long term, a fantastic thing for Ireland. Yeah, but I do think as well, he's we've we've obviously got a new manager and stuff like that. I'd be interested to see what, what he kind of thinks of him and stuff like that and what he even thinks of the move because we are going to have Nations League games and mm. Jake will probably part, be part of that, but he could be looking at those games to... Um, go on international duty maybe you know perform for ireland which then maybe when he comes back to everton that could get him in mm. club form wise uh, as well which has been that's been a big problem of ireland's in recent years is we've only had a, a handful of players playing premier league mm. and um some of the other players are struggling at championship sides or remember connor Howard was at villa and mick mccarthy was giving him game time just to kind of try to get him back into the villa side i think that could be the case with jake as well i think jake should be trying to use the the Carabao Cup, but these types of uh, games to try yeah. get himself into the team. And ultimately, if Everton decide to go to a back three, there's no reason why the three of them can't play together as well. And that would be an interesting one against, say, a Man City or something like that, if, if that is the case. There's no reason why the three of them couldn't play as well. But I think he'd be using either the international windows and the kind of cups to um, to get himself into the team. But I think he should really set himself a target to try to be in the team a good bit before January. Um, because obviously we're going to have that period December crossing over to January, which is always very busy as well. Is that um, just just before we go? Obviously, you've spoken to him um, over on over on Irish Football Fan TV. Is there is there anything we need to watch out for? Is has he got any special quirks? Is he uh, is he into into like I don't know? Is he a big gamer or is he into anything that we should keep our eye out for? Is there anything about his personality that stands out? Or as you said, is he just a quiet fellow who just wants to get on playing with footy? I think he's, he's he's similar. I I said this last night. I think he's very similar to Seamus Coleman in a way. Like quiet lad off the pitch. He comes from a GAA background as well. He played Gaelic and he played hurling, but he was also a boxer as well. He was quite <laughs> a high, high, highly rated boxer back in his day when he was a young lad. So he has kind of those three things. So he's not he's not someone you would want to uh, to mess with. So I think that's that's obviously going to scare uh, other players as well. His physicality. I actually remember when he came on against Portugal and he manhandled i think it was bernard uh, it might have been joe joe cancelo mm. and he manhandled and he's looking at him like you know what am i supposed to do here but i don't think maybe he has a bit more of an aggressive side that you don't really see other than when he's actually playing the sports but very quiet very nice guy uh family family oriented guy as well yeah. 
um, and his family seem really nice. So I just see, I see a lot of striking similarities to Seamus with Jake, to be honest. Yeah, it's it. You got it. It's the gingers, mate. You've got to be careful around the gingers, mate. Just can just snap like that and can just go off on one. Um, just before, just just finally, finally. Obviously, you were in Sligo last week to see to see Evan over there, and you obviously went to the Seamus Coleman um premiere for the documentary as, as as well. How was it having the toffees over in Ireland and actually being able to sort of celebrate being an Evertonian around other Evertonians and other Irish Evertonians? What was that like? Yeah, it was nice because I, I did get a lot of sticks and, you know, you know everything on the channel is always, you know, Everton-based or whatever. So to be actually be able to do something, uh, to see how many actual Evertonians there were around uh, Sligo as well was amazing. And there was a lot of scousers over who I would know from going over to games and stuff like that. So it was great to kind of catch up with so many people. Great to see Shame is celebrated by so many people. The premiere as well was was brilliant to see him there with his family and for his family and his kids to kind of see how... How much he was celebrated and stuff like that and he said that to me kind of um as well he was like i didn't really want to do this but i wanted the kids to kind of get an idea of kind of what his life is like and then for him to come home and almost get say a testimonial yeah because i don't think he'd be the type of person who'd be going looking for a testimony so it was kind of like a quieter affair because if he was to have a testimony it'd probably be goodison and mm. way more people would have went so i think he kind of liked it being a, a more quiet kind of sort of event but now listen it was a an unbelievable day it was brilliant it was brilliant to see so many happy and i think there's a lot of sligo fans now who will be everton fans just by doing that one little thing of of coming over and um, there's a huge crossover there between sligo rovers and everton between james coleman and mm. dixie dean um as well so so there is a bit of a crossover there and i think uh, obviously having the players there and they stop for photos after the game and stuff like that 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 will stand to uh evertonians uh, from Sligo in the future, and I think that we'll have a, a little bit more of an Irish fan base uh, going forward. But now, obviously, with Jake on board, it's it's great to have another Irish man there, and hopefully, he can carry the flag now for the next uh, number of years, and hopefully, he can maybe be there for the amount of time Seamus has been. Absolutely, it's always good to have Everton plays in the uh, in the Irish team. It's always always has been, and always will be. So, Paul, thank you as ever for coming on, mate. It's great to have you, uh, Paul Neal from Irish Football Fan TV. Make sure you check out that channel. Always got stuff going on on the likes of Instagram as well. So, Paul, thank you for being on, mate. Oh, thanks for having me, and uh, up the toffees. Absolutely, absolutely. There you go. Jake O'Brien has signed for Everton. Make sure to give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more great videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. See you later.